Greetings, Earthlings. This is the lesson for Wednesday the 7th. And believe it or not, you won't need any notebook paper. All right. First things first. Grab your travel guide. And you'll need a cell phone or an old school calculator for some easy, fun math. It really is fun. I'm not kidding. All right. The first thing I want you to do is we're going to do gravity. Okay. On the back, tell yourself that the gravity we're writing down is as compared to Earth. Okay, so here we go. So, make sure you're on the Mercury page, right where it says gravity, write down 0.38. Make sure you get the point there. Now, let me tell you what that means, okay? The gravity on Mercury is 38% as strong as it is here on Earth because there isn't as much planet there to pull you down. So, um, a 100-pound 8th grader on Earth, so an Earthling that weighs 100 pounds here would only feel like they weighed 38 pounds at Mercury. They didn't lose weight. The, the planet there isn't pulling on them so hard as hard. Okay. So, what you do with your calculator is let me clear mine out okay put in your body weight and see nobody's going to know your numbers except you okay put in your body weight i'm 165 i don't know if can you see that i'm gonna lower this take your body weight times 0.38 and then hit equals so i would feel like i only weighed 60 about 62.7 about 63 pounds you'd feel almost three times stronger, okay? You could jump three times higher, that kind of thing, other than the space that you'd have to be wearing. All right, I'm gonna clear that out. Venus isn't as, a, isn't as exciting, it's 0.91. So you'd feel 9% lighter. Make sure you get the decimal in there, 0.91, okay? Using the fiscus weight, 165 times 0.91, I'd feel like I weighed 150, okay? Okay? If you're getting this, Earth is going to be really boring. What's Earth's gravity on Earth? Uh, 1, 1 1.00. If you have to do this on a calculator, come on already. Any number times 1 is the same number you started with. So I'd be 165, okay? Mars. Okay, this is a coincidence, but it's a tie with Mercury. It's 0.38 again, so you already did that one. Okay, 0.38. 38% of Earth gravity. Because Mars is smaller, it doesn't pull down on you as hard. Okay, skip the asteroid belt, go to Jupiter. This is the one that will blow your mind. Okay, Jupiter, 2.52. Okay, using my fiscus weight. 165 times 2.52. Get ready. I would feel like I weighed 415, 416 pounds. Okay? Ugly heavy. Oh, it'd be exhausting. Okay? And I have personal experience with this. I'm going to show you. Okay? So, I move 165 pounds around all the time here on Earth. That would weigh, that would feel like it weighed 416 pounds on Jupiter. What I always did when I had people in class with me was I would show them what it was like to carry this much weight around, okay? Now, so I'm gonna, since I already move 165 pounds around with me already, I'm gonna subtract 165 for that, minus 165. So in other words, I have to add about 251 pounds and I'd put that on my back and I would stagger across the room. Let me show you what that was like. I don't have video of this, it's out there on the internet somewhere. You'd have to go looking, okay? 
Here's one of my former students, Bryce. He weighed that much, and it was not fat. That's muscle, okay? He went to the U on a wrestling scholarship at a heavyweight. Um, great kid. Not an ounce of ba baby fat on him. And that's me staggering around across my old classroom with him on my back. And my face gets all red from the exhaustion. Okay? Here's the thing. If you went to Jupiter, which would be a really, really, really dumb thing to do. If you went to Jupiter... Even if you were super physically fit, you would have to have one of those recliners that people use to help them stand up. The kind that lifts and pushes you out of the chair. You couldn't, you wouldn't be strong enough to get up out of a chair if you got to Jupiter. Okay, let me put that a different way. You would have a hard time pushing buttons on the control panel of your spacecraft. Okay. Imagine that, that picture I just showed you. Imagine Bryce sitting in my lap and then telling me to stand up and he couldn't help me. I wouldn't be able to do it. There's no way I could stand up with 250 pounds in my lap. It's not happening. Okay, Saturn. It's another big planet, but it's a lot fluffier. So you would not notice it being that much extra. 1.07. So, clearing this out, 165 times 1.07, you know, it'd be, I'd feel like I weighed about 177 pounds. Okay, Uranus, 0 0.91, another tie. That, we already did that with Venus, so that's two ties. Mercury and Mars were tied, and... Uranus and Venus were tied. I'll just re 165 times 0.91 equals 150 pounds. Okay. Neptune. Neptune's more dense, so it pulls down a little harder. 1.14. My weight, 165 times 1.14. 188 pounds. I wouldn't like it, but I could manage. Now wait till you see Pluto. Oh my goodness, you would have fun at Pluto. Okay. 0.06. That's only 6% of Earth's gravity. There's not much Pluto at Pluto pulling you down. Okay. So I'm going to clear this. 165 times 0.06. Oh, I'd feel like I only weighed 9.9. .9. 10 pounds, okay? Even with a spacesuit on, I would be able to jump so high, so far. I don't know if you ever saw the old uh, animated movie Space Jam. Um, the version I'm thinking of, you know, Michael Jordan and Bugs Bunny and Marvin the Martian and Taz and all those guys. Imagine, imagine playing basketball on Pluto. It would be incredible. The, the hoop would have to be a, a ton higher so before it, anybody could just jam the basketball and dunk on that it'd be a completely different game all right now you just wrote those down if you need to review those here they are right here okay now let me give you a memory trick you don't need to write this down my very educated mother just showed us nine planets that's the way to remember the order of the planets Okay, a lot of memory tricks that start out my very whatever. Okay, a lot of times they're kind of sexist. This one gives, this one makes your mom sound smart, and she knows there's still nine planets, kind of Pluto. My very educated mother just showed us nine planets. I always write it out M V E Mars J S U N P because there's two M's, and Mars is only four letters long. So, so here it is here, M V E Mars J S U N P. Okay, all right, next. This is an easy one. General makeup. What this is, is what planet is made out of.
Okay, I'm at 10 minutes. Okay, so this goes fast. Now, as usual, mercury, we have to write really small. Metal and rock. It's metal on the inside, rock on the outside. Mercury. Metal and rock. If you want to write M and R, go for it. As long as you wrote out what metal and rock stands for, M and R stands for. Okay, earth, metal and rock. We're mostly iron. And then rock on top of that. Metal and rock. Mars, metal and rock. And no, we're not writing the same thing on all of them because Mars is the last one that's metal and rock. Okay. Skip to the to Jupiter. You should be on the yellow sheet. Okay. Tell yourself, gas giant. Liquid H and HE. You're supposed to remember that means hydrogen and helium. Okay. Saturn. Gas giant. Liquid H and HE. Now, this is a newer term. Uranus and Neptune are called ice giants. One way you can think about it is like they're giant slushies or slurpees. Okay, it's an ice giant. It's liquefied gases heavier than H and HE. Think of nasty stuff like ammonia. Not pneumonia, that's a breathing illness. Num uh, uh, ammonia is the nasty, stinky stuff. It's what makes cat pee smell so bad and meth labs, okay? Um, methane, sewer gas, that kind of stuff. That's what we're talking about, liquefied gases, okay? Neptune, the same thing, ice giant. Liquefied gases heavier. If you don't want to write that all again, say C Uranus. Okay. Ice giant liquefied gases heavier than H and H E. And Pluto, that's an easy one. Ice. What's on top of the ice? Ice and snow, pink snow. All right, next one. So I'm going to give you a review on that one. Next. Number of moons. The number of moons. Okay. This will go kind of quickly. Mercury, zero. Venus, zero. You better know Earth. One. Mars, two. And put an asterisk by it. It stole two asteroids from the next door neighbor, the asteroid belt. Just put two and then a little star by it. Okay. Jupiter, king of the planets. A ton of gravity. It has 79. And that number might go up if we find more. Some of these are quite small now. We've got good telescopes and, and spacecraft that have gone around Jupiter and they found a ton of them. 79. Okay. Saturn. 82. That's the highest. That number might change and it won't go down. It'll go up if they find any more. Uranus, when I started teaching, we knew it had about a dozen, I think. Now it's up to 27. When I started teaching way back in the Stone Ages, we knew Neptune had a couple. Now we know it has 14. Those numbers can go up. 
And when I started teaching way back when, we knew Pluto had one big moon. Now we know it has five. And we flew by it not very many years ago. So there's five moons of Pluto. Okay, so here's a review of that. Number of moons. There's that MVE Mars JSUNP thing again. Okay, now, enough with the numbers. Let's do something a little bit different. This is for those of you that, that you'll like this if you like mythology or being art, artistic, okay? I'm going to give you the symbol for each planet, okay? And, or, and the sun, too, even though it's not a planet, okay? So, and what I would like you to do is write the symbol on the closed pages, okay? These don't have to be big and fancy. They're simplified things. You can find these on the Internet, okay? The sun symbol is just a circle with a, a dot in the middle. That's all it is. Okay, now some of these, you're gonna think, hey, I know that one. And sometimes you'll be right, sometimes you'll be wrong. This one here, this is not the first thing you think of when you see it, okay? Draw a small circle and a plus sign underneath it. No, it's not one you've seen before, probably. That's not what you're thinking. And those things on top are not horns. That's not a little demon dude, devil dude, okay? I'm gonna pick it. The, my cell phone up and show you what it is. It's called a caduceus. You've seen one. Okay, goodbye, Bryce. Okay. You've seen these on sides of ambulances. You've seen them on on a like prescriptions at a pharmacy, the hospital. You'll see it on medical shows. This is the story behind it. The the ancient mythology story that when the gods look down from Mount Olympus at the earthlings and man it must suck being humans when they get sick they don't know what to do we should give them some help so they they gave a human doctor some magical assistance in these two magical snakes okay and the snakes would hang out all day long during the office hours they would they would curl themselves around the staff that he carried okay these are the wings of mercury by the way and what the story is that when the sick person got brought to the doctor, the snakes, he would hold the snakes up next to the sick person and the snakes would stick their tongues out and taste the air around the sick person. The ancient people who made up the story knew that some diseases have unique odors. The snakes would smell, taste the air around the sick person. He would pull the snakes back and they would whisper in a magical language only he understood they would whisper in his ear what was wrong with the person, and then he would know what to tell, tell them. Here's what's wrong with you, and give them the, their prescription. Here's what you need to do to get better. And then the last thing he would tell them, when you get better, make sure you bring an offering to the god of Mercury who's responsible for this. That's where this came from. So that weird symbol here is supposed to represent two snakes wrapped around a staff. Okay. All right, Venus, this is one you'll see uh, on products sold to women, okay? Um, we use this symbol to represent female because Venus was the goddess of beauty and family and love and childbirth. That is a hand mirror, okay, so she can make sure her hair was good, okay? Earth symbol, just a circle. With this inside of it, those are the four directions, north, east, south, west. Okay, Mars symbol. This is not what you might think it is. You get the wrong idea if you ever watch Austin Powers movies. He wears the giant one of these around his neck on his necklace. Okay. That is a shield and spear. Mars was the god of war. That's the shield and there's the spear. Okay. Now... Jupiter, king of the gods, okay? He had a bad temper, okay? If he was mad at somebody, he's going to kill him. A lot of times, he'd zap them with a lightning bolt. Now, this doesn't look like a lightning bolt anymore, but it used to, okay? The symbol will look like a really funky four. That's supposed to be a lightning bolt. I didn't make this up. I'm not kidding you. That's really what it's supposed to look like, okay? Um, oh, I just wrote down on the wrong page. Rat. I have to find the yellow out. Sorry, hopefully you didn't do that wrong. In the wrong spot. 
they actually do make yellow out. Okay. Um, I'll take care of that later. All right. Saturn. I'm running. We got 20 minutes already. Saturn. He was the god of the harvest. Okay. Uh, the, you'll see these at Halloween. What the Grim Reaper carries. But remember, he's a reaper. Okay. Don't get creeped out by this. Here is a scythe. That's what you used for harvesting. They didn't have combines. You cut stuff, the crops down using that tool. This is the blade that goes next to the ground and these are your two handles. You use a lot of hip action and you swing that blade. Okay, That's a scythe because Saturn was the god of the harvest. So it looked like a seven, sort of curvy seven. That's that's a scythe. Okay, Uranus. Not very creative. This is another god of war. That's a shield, and there's a spear. This time the spear points straight up. That's all it is. Okay? For Neptune, think Little Mermaid, if you ever watched that. Think of Ariel's dad, the king. The thing that he carried. A trident. A fish spear. Okay, coming back. We're almost out of time. And Pluto, this is the only planet discovered in modern times. It was discovered in 1930. Okay, Pluto is a capital P. And a capital L. And that is a suck up move because the guy who found Pluto, his boss's initials were P and L. His boss was Percival Lowell. Okay. All right. That's 22 minutes. Let's see. I'm going to go give you the recap here. We just did a lot of stuff. Okay. All right, 22 and a half minutes. See you tomorrow.